our ability to harness the power of magnetism has allowed for the development of countless technologies that we rely on in the modern world, but there's far more use for them than keeping a report card attached to the front of your fridge. With their ability to generate electricity, to align with the magnetic field of the Earth, and even to move objects, let's explore the most creative machines ever made. Here are 15 amazing machines that use magnets. Number 15. Maglev Train Connecting Shanghai Pudong International Airport with the Longyang Road Station where you can interchange with the Shanghai Metro, the Shanghai Maglev Train holds the record for being the oldest commercial maglev still in operation and the fastest electric train in the world with an average speed of 268 miles or 431 kilometers per hour. This allows the trains to travel the 18.6 mile or 30 kilometer track in just 7 minutes and 20 seconds, something that's possible because they operate entirely on magnets. Using the TransRapid system, which was developed in Germany in the late 1960s, there are no wheels, axles, gear transmissions, or steel rails. Instead, the train levitates above the track guideway using the magnetic force between two arrays of electromagnetic coils, with one side in the base of the train and the other on the surface of the track. This means that the vehicle floats on a magnetic cushion around 5.9 inches or 15 centimeters above the track. And amazingly, this process uses less electricity than the operation of the air conditioning units on board. The magnetism is also used to transfer power from the track to the train, so it actually doesn't need a power source of its own. To ensure the train remains in the correct position, the gap distance is measured more than 100,000 times per second, and adjustments are made automatically, and in the event of a breakdown, the train carries backup batteries that can temporarily keep it in operation. Number 14. Wind Turbines with the ongoing need to move away from carbon-based fuels and to generate energy by using green alternatives, wind farms are being built more than ever at sites across the globe. They're now a familiar sight, with huge blades spinning around, but they wouldn't be possible at all if it wasn't for the magnets that they use. Wind power has been used for centuries, and these modern versions work in very much the same way. Instead of using the motion of the sails to operate machinery inside of a flour mill, though, the rotational energy is instead channeled into an electrical generator, which is essentially a device that rotates magnets inside a wire coil. Known as a permanent magnet generator, the magnet at the center, which is made up of alternating north and south poles, is spun around within an induction coil. It's a basic principle of physics that in an environment like this, a changing magnetic field will produce electricity, which is the reverse process to how applying a charge to a coil will produce a magnetic field. Because these turbines use permanent magnets rather than electrically produced temporary ones, they need very little input to allow them to operate effectively. And once they've been built, they only require occasional maintenance to ensure the parts aren't wearing away. Something that's particularly useful, given the fact that most turbines are in places that are very difficult to access. Number 13. Scrap Heap Magnet Humans, we create a large amount of waste, so much so that large quantities of it are sent to landfill sites where it's simply buried and forgotten about. When it comes to metal waste, though, particularly from vehicles, it may instead be sent to a scrap heap where any parts that are reusable can be salvaged. One of the most effective ways of doing this is with a scrap heap magnet. After the cars have been crushed into pieces, it would take a person an impractical amount of time to sift through and retrieve anything that's useful but a magnet can do virtually the same job by differentiating between magnetic elements and non-magnetic ones. The magnets used in scrapyards are powerful electromagnets that are made up of a wire coil and an iron core. When a current is passed through the wires, the core becomes magnetized, and this then attracts everything that's made of iron, cobalt, and nickel. The ability to separate these materials from everything else saves a huge amount of time at sorting, and it's also pretty cool to see in action. Number 12. Central Solenoid The most ambitious science project ever attempted is currently being assembled in France. Known as ITER, it's the creation of a new nuclear energy facility that, instead of using nuclear fission to produce energy, as is the case at all other nuclear power plants, is attempting to recreate the process at the center of the sun to harness nuclear fusion. This, in theory, could be the cleanest and greatest source of power, and if everything goes to plan, could solve our impending energy needs by the end of this century. 
One of the main challenges with the process, though, is that the temperatures created in the experiment at more than 270 million degrees Fahrenheit will be hot enough to melt every known material on Earth. So instead, magnetic fields will be used to contain the reaction in a ring away from metal surfaces. A completely new type of magnet had to be designed to make this even possible, and the facility is now installing the device which is called the Central Solenoid, which is the most powerful magnet ever constructed. It's so big that it had to be built in several parts, but once they're combined, it will be 60 feet or 18 meters tall, 14 feet or 4.3 meters wide, and will weigh more than 1,100 tons. Incredibly, the magnetic forces it'll be able to generate will be the equivalent to 280,000 times that of the Earth's magnetic field. That means the structure it sits in will have to be able to withstand forces equal to twice the power of a shuttle launch. The magnet itself, if used elsewhere, for example, would be able to lift an aircraft carrier into the air, and it's taken more than two years to build this thing. I hope it works. Number 11. Project Isult in late 2021, a team at the French Alternative Energies and Atomic Energy Commission, which is known as the CEA, revealed details of a new project called ESOLT, which is the largest and most powerful magnetic resonance imaging magnet to have ever been built. MRIs are a great way to see inside objects, such as human bodies, without taking a more invasive approach, and the level of detail that's possible with ESOLT is nothing short of incredible. Weighing more than 135 tons, it's at least four times as powerful as the typical MRI that's used in a hospital. And while it's capable of performing whole body scans, this particular one has been built to more fully understand the structures and processes inside the brain. A set of example scans that were released in October of 2021 show a pumpkin in a way that you've probably never seen before. And this is important because they're surprisingly similar to brain tissue in terms of their varying texture and shape. This is a project that's taken 10 years to complete and uses a niobium-titanium conductor to generate the field, which is the same method used in particle accelerators. It's expected that ESOLT will lead to a series of medical breakthroughs in the coming years, with the potential to fully map the brain in extraordinary detail, possibly 10 times more than has previously been possible. Number 10. Magnetic Elevator Without elevators, it would have been impossible to build the high-rise buildings that are now commonplace around the world. But while we're more than used to the designs that use a system of ropes, cables, and pulleys to transport us up and down, a German manufacturer has developed a completely new concept. Thyssenkrupp has recently revealed a test building where all of the elevators are instead magnetically powered. And this means that they're not only faster when they're moving up and down, but they can also travel sideways too. By using a similar technology to that in maglev trains, the elevator shafts have a series of electromagnetic circuits that will either hold the elevator cabin in place or move it on to the next section. With computer systems controlling the entire process, each cabin could potentially have its own custom route design depending on where the passenger wants to go, and each shaft could have multiple cabins using it at the same time, as opposed to being limited to one as is currently the case. The successful development of this technology could lead to buildings being designed completely differently, and the days of waiting for an elevator to travel down all the floors to the one you're waiting at could be over. But there's clearly a safety aspect they need to overcome, and the question of whether people will feel comfortable using them. Number 9. The Maglab Hybrid the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory, often known as MagLab, is a facility at Florida State University that's the only one of its kind in the United States and performs research into magnetic fields for a range of different scientific disciplines. At the core of this facility and the device that gives it the edge over all of its competitors around the world is the strongest magnet ever built for nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy experiments, and it's a hugely impressive machine. At two stories tall and costing $14.4 million to build, the 35-ton superconducting magnet is kept at a constant temperature of negative 456 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 271 degrees Celsius by a continuous flow of liquid helium and 4,000 gallons of cold water per minute. Part of the reason it's so complex just to maintain the temperature is that the magnet needs 30 megawatts of power to operate, and this in itself generates a huge amount of heat. If the magnet were to ever be allowed to warm up to room temperature, it would take six weeks to get it back down to its optimal operating conditions. 
Within the coil of the magnets are four miles, or about six and a half kilometers worth of copper wires, around the same as used in the construction of 80 homes. And in combination, the two parts of the magnet, one of which is a superconducting magnet and the other which is a resistance magnet, and able to create a force measuring 45 Tesla, which is 30 times more powerful than the magnet in the MRI machine at your local hospital. Number 8. Rail Gun Weapons. They tend to fall into two different types, those that cause damage because they contain an explosive force, such as a bomb, and those that are destructive because they rely on the high speed of a solid projectile, such as a gun. There have long been attempts to create something that's essentially like a gun, but on a much bigger scale, and the result is something called a rail gun. While the technology is still in its infancy, and no one is entirely sure whether it'll ever become feasible in a war setting, the United States Navy has actually managed to successfully build one. Instead of using explosive power to launch the projectile, it instead uses electromagnets, and this approach means they could be hugely powerful. They're made up of two parallel magnetic rails with an armature that can slide up and down. When current is applied to these rails, the armature is propelled to high speeds, and then it reaches the end and any projectile that's been put into it is then launched out. It is believed that launching projectiles in this way will be far faster than chemical explosives are ever capable of. But for now, there are concerns around how accurate a launch can be, and also the durability of the gun itself because of the extreme loads all of the components are subjected to. Number 7. Induction Furnace Traditionally, furnaces used in industries such as metalworking or jewelry production would have been kept at temperature by burning huge amounts of fuel. But in the same way that an induction cooking surface works at home, it's now possible instead to use electricity and magnetism to generate temperatures capable of melting metal instead. Essentially, these machines are a series of solenoid electromagnetic coils that produce rapidly reversing magnetic fields. When these are applied towards metal within the melting chamber, they cause eddy currents and circular electrical currents within the metal by electromagnetic induction. And this excites the molecules, causing the metal to heat up and eventually melt. It is a more expensive way to achieve the result than using an external fuel, but there are a number of benefits that come from this approach, particularly for companies involved in producing alloys. The main one is that as the heat is magnetically induced, there's no danger of any chemical contamination mixing with the melted product, which is something that would affect its overall purity. Number 6. Magnetic Head Pulley a magnetic head pulley is a machine that's used on various production lines and facilities around the world, often in factories and recycling plants, but are also part of the reason why the food that we buy from stores is safe to eat. It takes a lot to process ingredients into a finished product. They have to be grown or reared and then sent where they'll be chopped and cooked before being mixed and then packaged. And at a number of stages during this process, there's a chance that the machines involved may shed pieces of metal. Designers ensure that machine parts within the production line are made from magnetic metals, and this means that at various points, a magnetic head pulley can act as a safeguard to ensure these parts don't reach the mouths of consumers. Ingredients pass over or beneath a rotating magnet like this, and while the foodstuffs will pass through without any problem, anything that's magnetic will be separated and deposited into a separate bin. Number 5. The Calutron the Second World War was one of the most devastating events in human history, and researchers on either side spent vast resources on development of new, deadly weapons. In the end, it was the Manhattan Project that ended things with the creation of a nuclear weapon, the most powerful man-made release of energy ever devised. But to do this, the scientists needed to also build specialized magnetic machines. Known as calutrons, they were a type of mass spectrometer, and material would be put into one and sped up by magnetic fields and a similar process as to what happens in particle accelerators. These particles are then deflected by magnetic fields and collide with one another, which causes the release of ions that smash into a plate where they produce a measurable electric current. What was clever about this design was that scientists could determine the size and weight of the ions of different isotopes, with the heavier ones being deflected less by the magnetism, and by putting in the right material and capturing the isotopes they wanted, they were able to isolate high-purity uranium-235, which was the main component of the nuclear bomb. Without the calutron, there'd have been no way to produce enough of the material for a viable weapon, and the outcome of the war could have very well been different. 
making it one of the most impactful magnetic machines ever devised. Soon after the war, though, new methods were devised for the enrichment of uranium, and the only calutrons that remain are those that have been kept for historical purposes. Number 4. Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer The International Space Station is essentially an orbital laboratory that governments and scientific institutes are able to use to test experiments in conditions that are virtually outside of the Earth's influence. And in May of 2011, the Space Shuttle Endeavour made its final ever launch to take a particularly interesting module to the station to be installed. Known as the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, it was originally meant to be made up of a cryogenic superconducting magnet system, but because of the difficulties of safely using one in space, the plan was changed at the last moment to a less powerful non-superconducting version. Nevertheless, the AMS, which is an externally mounted module, has still been extremely successful at its purpose to measure the presence of antimatter in cosmic rays and further help to understand the formation of the universe and potentially even discover evidence for dark matter. Within five years of its installation, project leaders announced that it had detected 90 billion cosmic ray events and many hundreds of thousands of positrons coming from all directions. And while it's yet to prove the existence of dark matter in the way that had been hoped, it's already made some surprising discoveries, such as a flurry of particles being released by a nearby pulsar, and what appears to be the detection of anti-helium-3, which until this point had never been seen in nature. Number 3. Magnet Torker So much of our modern lives rely on the use of satellites, whether it be for communication, broadcasting, or being able to use location services in your car. While we take most of these for granted, it's still a complicated and expensive business to send a satellite into space. And once they're up there, they have to be built to last because there's no real way to perform maintenance on them. The same problem applies to refueling any engines, and this is why magnets are so important to devices in orbit. Once they're in position, they usually need to keep in the correct orientation towards Earth to work perfectly. Thrusters can, of course, be used to do this initially, but with all the forces and events that can push a satellite off position, it's not feasible for this to be the long-term solution. Instead, they use something called a magnet torquer, which is essentially a series of electromagnetic coils within the satellite. There's an abundant source of energy in space from the sun, so all that's needed are solar panels to ensure the magnets can always be powered. And then they're used to create a magnetic force. What's really clever about this technique is that the majority of the Earth's magnetic field sits beneath the height that satellites are orbiting at, so the onboard systems simply need to calculate the amount of torque and force needed to keep the satellite in position, and then generate that by activating the coils that push against the Earth's field. Number 2. WAS 3000 Music technology has developed at a faster pace than many others in the past century or so, and not only can we carry around tens of thousands of tracks in our devices, or even stream them without the need to physically store them, but there are far cleverer devices available to listen to music, from wireless headphones to speakers that perfectly replicate what you'd hear if you were there in person. One of the things that everyone pays attention to is just how loud they can go, and the loudest speaker ever made takes things to a level where it'd physically be dangerous to be anywhere near it. Every speaker has magnets inside which are used by applying electrical currents to create an opposing magnetic field that creates vibrations and makes the cone move. This is what produces sound waves that we hear. The designers of the WAS-3000 incorporated some of the largest electromagnets ever installed in a speaker, and the result is astonishing. This speaker has a maximum output of 165 decibels, which is 10 times as loud as if you were standing next to a jet engine, and 5 times the volume of a space shuttle launch. With violent vibrations in your chest, nausea happening, and potentially a similar sensation to if you were compressed underwater, it's perhaps no surprise to hear that this speaker isn't designed for commercial use and is instead for use in acoustic test chambers. Number 1. The Large Hadron Collider Built-in tunnels deep underground near the border between France and Switzerland, the Large Hadron Collider was originally constructed between 1998 and 2008 and was, at the time, the most ambitious science experiment ever attempted by mankind. It's the largest and most powerful particle collider ever built, and by creating beams of photons traveling close to the speed of light, researchers are able to smash these particles into each other at such high energies that they release even smaller pieces that aren't observable in any other situations. 
With a mission to further understand the most basic building blocks of nature, it takes a highly complex machine to make this possible, and at the core are a series of magnets. In fact, throughout the tunnels used, the LHC has 1,232 dipoles, which are magnets that are used to bend the trajectory of those particles, and 474 quadrupoles, which are the ones that use to squeeze the particles into a beam. All of those magnets are superconducting, which means they operate at close to absolute zero, the equivalent of about negative 455 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 271 Celsius, with each one being 50 feet or 15 meters long and weighing up to 35 tons. They're so large and need to be positioned with such accuracy that a recent upgrade to the LHC meant it took more than a year to replace just 22 of the magnets. A fault with just a single one of the 1,700 plus magnets it needs to operate could jeopardize any experiment taking place at the time and potentially cause catastrophic damage to the sensitive equipment used to monitor those particles. Watch our machines playlist for more top 15 videos about awesome machines. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best machine videos.